Well, over the last few days, it's a pretty good assumption that your furnace was getting a pretty good workout, but you should ask yourself, when was the last time it got a good once over? Dan? Kenny, it sounds like some of your chili's kicking off that fire alarm, baby. Hey, it's the one appliance that nobody ever touches until it breaks, and then when it does, it can be darn right dangerous, not to mention cold coming up. We're going to show you how to keep this baby working. It is about time that you and your home, it's about something you don't really think about until it is broken, and then it can be seriously dangerous. And we're talking about furnaces, which is about the last thing that we want to talk about right now, but today's Fox 31's Dan <laughs> Drew is showing you how to keep your furnace running, your house warm, and also save some cash. Hi, Dan. You know what? I'm telling you guys, I'm going crazy listening to that. It's, You're going to go clinically insane unless you put something in your ears right now. I'm serious, guys. I'm concerned about you. It's it's no good. We've got the <laughs> fire alarm going off. It's like 80 right, Jeremy, degrees. Jeremy, kill that audio. Hey, guys, it's the, one, it's the one appliance in our home that we really don't touch until it goes wrong or so it doesn't work. And then we panic because it usually happens in the wintertime. And then we freeze. It could be darn right dangerous. Matter of fact, there's a gentleman in this country, 90 years old, died because his heat was cut off. Well, that was because he didn't pay his bills. But that's still not a good thing. Artie Schieffer is with me with Applewood Plumbing, uh, Heating, and Electric. Artie, nice to see you. Good to meet you, Dan. You know what happened to me the other day? I, I was know. actually two nights ago, it was really, really cold. I got up in the morning to get ready to go to work. The house is about 49 degrees. I look at the thermostat, make sure it's still on because I have two small kids. I go downstairs, I go, what is wrong with my furnace? The fan was turned off. My son turned off the fan to the furnace. Do you believe that? That happens an awful lot. We get kids playing with the switches, turn the switch off, you got no heat. And we froze. But anyway, that was an easy fix for me. Now, we're looking at a modern furnace right now. i got to ask you a million dollar question. How long do furnaces last in the home? 5, 10, 20 years? Generally 15 to 20 years, really? and a lot of construction grade or what they put in a new home are, are cheaper end. You right. can buy an aftermarket like we install and get 20 to 25 years. That's but a long time. A budget grade model, 15 to 20 years. Now, what happens? Why do furnace, what's the number one reason that furnaces do go kaput in wintertime? People call up, they panic, oh, it's not working. What's the number one reason? Uh, the number one reason has got to be a dirty filter. Come on, really? Really. Furnaces run hot and if you don't change your filter, it slows down the airflow and they overheat and they'll shut off and it usually takes 90 minutes for them to kick back on. 90 minutes is enough time for your house yeah. to cool down pretty sufficiently. Oh, I'll tell you one thing, we, we change the oil in our vehicles a lot more and we, I, we hardly ever touch the furnace. Now, talking about filters, you got one right here, I'm going to grab it now. It's so confusing because I, somebody in the business, not you guys, but you told me, oh, buy the El Cheapos and just change it every three months and then that's all you need to do. That's not a good idea because... Well, because the cheapest filters are going to let a lot through and dirty up your air conditioning and coils especially, but the most expensive filter isn't a good idea either. Go something in the middle, a buck or two a piece, and buy the whole box. That way you have them there, and it's real easy to change them. You go down there, you don't have to run out, put it off for another week. You've got them there. Buy the whole box, change it every month. You like the pleated kind, and you change it every month? Every month. Really? throughout the year, especially if you have air conditioning. That seems like a simple fix, yet enough of us every year don't do it. Keeps you guys in busy Applewood plumbing and eating. Thanks, Artie. Okay, Kenny I'm and, and Pegs, I'm ready to listen to see if you... Uh, we're still beeping we're still like here. crazy, Dan. You know, and Turn he's it off, so man. Right. Turn it off! The worst part, Dan, the rest of the building's been evacuated. We're still here. <laughs> That's terrible. <Yeah. laughs> Hang in there, Pegs. Okay, Dan. Right. You know, Good he's, tips he's there. telling the truth there. I just changed my filter probably the first time all winter. It's something you really don't think about, but especially now, you got to get down there and do it. And it'll save you some cash as well. That's right. Well, 746 right now. Plus, Fox 31's Dan DeRue wants to help keep you warm as well as safe this cold winter morning. Good morning, Dan. Kenny, good morning. You're settling in for a long winter's nap and you discover your furnace is not working. What can you do besides panic that's going to do you any good? Well, coming up, I'll tell you. 823 now. It is time to check in with Box 31's Dan DeRue. Dan is live in Denver this morning learning about a piece of equipment that will keep you very warm every night and people really need to pay attention to the stuff. It's easy, easy to forget the furnace, Dan. Well, Peggy, this, this instrument right here, this device for a lot of people, including myself, it's called a furnace and it actually heats the house and it's the one appliance that nobody even looks at unless until it breaks down. Then, then they'll call Applewood Plumbing and Heating and say, help us, help us. It's freezing. It's 20 below and our heater's not working. What are we going to do? And then our chiefer says, well, ma'am, we're kind of busy tonight, but there are some things you can do. The other day I woke up in the morning. It was 30 to 49 degrees in my house because my kid turned off the fan, so it was an easy fix for me. But, Artie, what can some people do when they discover uh, to their dismay that at night 
it's not working, their furnace is not working, are there some things they can do until the furnace guy can show up? Certainly there's a few things they can do and as funny as it sounds, the first thing you want to do is check your thermostat, make sure it's turned to heat and the temperature's turned up because it's amazing how many times I get out at 2 in the morning and the thermostat's turned off. It's pretty frustrating and, for all parties. And you still have to charge them. That's right. They pay me 70 bucks just to tell them to turn their thermostat on. Well, that's good advice. What's next? Well, what's next is after you've checked your thermostat, go downstairs to the furnace. And as I said earlier, most often it's because the furnace is overheating from a dirty filter. Mm -hmm. So take your filter out. Mm -hmm. Once you take your filter out and change it, mm -hmm. there should be a switch. <laughs> if you follow the electric cord from your furnace, there will be a switch either on the side of the furnace, on the wall, or on the ceiling near the furnace. Turn that off for five seconds and turn it back on because when a furnace overheats three times in a row, it does what we call lockout for 90 minutes and it won't attempt anything. Uh -huh. If you turn that off and back on, it resets the computer and it'll try again instantly. Now, if that doesn't work, panic sets in. If that doesn't work and you have no sound, and we'll walk you through this over the phone as well, if it has no sound, it's not trying to do anything, uh -huh. then you see if you have power. You check your breaker, check to make sure that switch is on, and Another one that we very commonly come up against is they did change their filter and they didn't get the bottom furnace door on right. Mm -hmm. Because on the bottom furnace door, you can see there's a switch there. That switch has to be fully depressed for the furnace to have power. So basic stuff. It's like your engine. If your engine doesn't turn over, you don't want to buy a whole new engine. Just going to make sure maybe your battery is, is hooked up properly and stuff. So is this, is this usually the result of most cases? I mean, like it's something small and minor? Usually, actually 20 to 30 percent of our calls are something just like oh, that. That's a lot. A thermostat turned off, or very common is I just changed my filter, and that's what I know. Go check your door, make sure your door's put back on right. Now, of course, we're talking about modern furnaces. Now, the old ones that look like an octopus in Washington Park, and it's down in the basement, and it's low, and it's dirty, and it's got a whole bunch of arms. Those are cast iron old furnaces that do not have circuit boards, and that's a whole different baby. It is. On those, it's best to call us right away because mm -hmm. a lot of those old furnaces don't have any safety devices to shut off the gas if the pilot goes out, so mm -hmm. they can be a hazard. Call right away. Good information. Guys, you want to for sure get your furnace checked once a year. For information, you can go to KDVR.com. Com. Of course, we're live at Applewood Plumbing and Heating and Artie Schieffer. That's a good TV name. Reporting live, Artie Schieffer, Fox <laughs> News. You might just borrow that for the day. Good yeah. tips there. Very yeah. good to know. Not many people think about the furnace, but how important That's because we stupid. <laughs> well, and it's Speak also yourself, good Dan. to know yeah. that, that when you call them, they can walk you through a lot of this right. over the phone, and then if it doesn't work, then you have to spend the money to get them out there. That's good news. There you go. Well, more local news coming up right after the break. <laughs> well, let's go to Dan DeRue. He has all the juice on this. Good morning, Dan. Dan. Charlie knocked that one right out of the park. <laughs> I mean, she's got that one. Hey, let me tell you something. You, you guys are absolutely right. It's, it's, it's called the furnace. We don't even look at this thing unless we want to be warm or actually in the summertime we want to be cool. It's got to work as well. And when it goes on the blink, then we panic and then we don't know what's going on. But there are some things we can look for. And especially if it's the night of. A couple nights ago, it was colder than you know what, Artie. And my furnace was off. It was 39 degrees, 49 degrees in the morning. I go downstairs. What's going on? There was just like a little switch. But what, what are some things that people can do? This thing goes on the blink. Well, really, they should have us out to do maintenance once a year, at least every other year, because there are things you can't do. But what you can do, first thing is, as we've discussed before, change that filter. This is the, this change is, it. Just like an oil filter, you got to change it. You got to change it every month. Now, the real thin ones, not a good idea because they don't filter enough. And the super duper thick ones, too thick, and I'm learning through you, that this thing is going to overheat. Once it overheats, you might have to buy a whole new furnace. That's right. That's Go not with good. Standard pleated filter, about a buck a piece. Change them every month. All right, Shaw Ken, I'm going to sh show you guys something. This is a too thick one. This is so thick, I'm going to try to scream through it. Uh, uh, uh. See what I'm saying? This is way too thick. You want something just right in the middle. Right, right. And the other thing you need to do is vacuum your furnace out, clean it. You uh -huh. keep your car clean. Yes. You keep the engine clean. Clean the furnace out. You can pull it off. You can vacuum it. Change the filter. That's about all you can do outside of us. Now, uh, if it goes out at night, like look for, look, check your thermostat. Make sure, A, the thermostat is on. Make sure it's set at the right temperature. And then maybe go down the basement and make sure that fan is on. That's what I learned, right? There's a fan yeah. in addition to the motor, and that fan has to be turned on. But what if the fan is turned on, the thermostat's on, everything appears to be working, but it's not working, then what? Well, you call us. Yeah. We're open 24 hours a day. And you might talk you through it on the phone or something? Or? Well, I'll talk you through a few things yeah. to try to get it up and going, yeah. but nine times out of 10, if you're calling at me at midnight, and it's not the door switch, it's not the fan switch, we'll come out. Now, to replace one of, the, one of these things, the, the modern ones, how much? About 
about four to six thousand dollars for a good furnace. You can get budget model, but that's probably why it's gone out because the builder put in something budget. Really, if you're doing it yourself and you plan on staying in the house, it's better to spend that money now than twice. Well, with the budget model too, you have to spend a lot of money on food for those gerbils that keep those wheels going, that's and that right. can be kind of costly as well. That's right. Gerbils eat a lot. <laughs> All right. For information, go to KDVR.com. Of course, we want to thank Applewood Plumbing, Heating, and Electric for hanging out with us this morning. And uh, guys, we're going to talk it back to you, toss it back to you. Uh... <laughs> oh! Cheap entertainment, folks. Well, I guess we could tape those to the wall and use them for insulation in our living room if we don't want to run the TV too loud. Mother I guess it works for everything. Did you see <laughs> the look on the furnace expert's face? God's prices. Damn, yeah. really loud this morning. Well, Good advice, though. Mm -hmm. Well, the early